Hello and welcome to another Applied Energy 6.2 tutorial. In this video I will once again talk about automatic and uh, auto crafting crystal growing. And this is a quite different setup compared to what I did last time. You can check the video description for a link to, uh, to this variant. And this one has a few advantages and a few drawbacks. So uh, I will briefly go through how it works in this state and what's good and bad with it. And then after I'm done, I will tear it down and rebuild it. So if you're interested in the building part, then stay tuned. So let's begin over here. We have, we have some stuff in here. So let's remove all these, uh, the pure ones that we are after and let's craft one. So we have one seed to one pure. We have, I have a crafting monitor so we know exactly what's going on. And in this setup I have three crafting storages. That means three crafting CPUs. And these CPUs, they, uh, since they have three of them, I can do three, three jobs at the same time. So I can order uh, one of the pure ones as well. Then we have that in a different one. So we have all patterns in the same one. This is uh, this is an improvement compared to the old one. So we can all these three can be made at the same time in the same setup. It requires an ME controller though because we have no uh, not enough channels to do it this way. The same way as before, we have interface to interface that receives them. And as I had before as well, to keep the accelerators turned on during the crafting process, but not, uh, not when, when nothing is crafted. We have these level emitters with the crafting cards that will emit a signal. And then we have the toggle buses that will uh, keep the orange network powered. So that's the same as before. And I will go through this when I build it as well. But then we have the big difference is that we have all these accelerators. I have more than four. We have four over there. Now we can have a total of eight. I can have one here as well, but I kept it open to, uh, to demonstrate. To dump the items in, I'm still using the formation planes. However, with a difference from before. We can uh, discard from those, it doesn't work. We have a fussy card here that makes sure that all seeds, regardless of uh, growth rate or growth percent, will be output from this formation plane. So all seeds, 10%, 20 90%, they will be output here, thanks to this card. Also important, priority one. Then we have the annihilation plane. This will, uh, th this can't be filtered, so it will just pick up anything that comes. And have one source, water source over there, and it will make the make them uh, flow. If I wouldn't have, if I only had one, and uh, have no flowing water the seeds wouldn't be pushed towards the plane, so they would never be picked up when they are done. Once they are picked up, they go back into the red network, and if they are still seeds, they are placed in the fussy card. Well, the fussy cards make sure that they are, they are put back into the accelerator. And if they are finished, then we have the storage bus with a minus one priority that will output the finished pure crystals into the interface again. Now, there are, of course, advantages to this. Oh, we have one left and one done and one almost, almost finished. Now it's finished, see, device offline and the crystal is, has grown. To be honest, I don't know if we really need these four. 
that are one, two, three, and the fourth one is missing, of course, because it's not a source block of water here, it's flowing water. And I'm not really sure if that counts. That's why I used eight like this. Uh, not sure. If you do know, leave a comment. And so this is slower. That setup over here. We had the seeds on the bottom here, just laying in the bottom source block of water. And over here they are flowing, so I think they are only half of the time into the source block and the rest of the time in the flowing. Plus, so when I compared these, I started them at the same time. This setup was finished long, long before this one. So I would guess that only these four are needed in the first step. And the other ones are not needed, but it's still, it takes longer. There it's slower, and in this setup it will consume much more power. Even if there are four, it will still consume more power because it takes longer. Now, the big... The big... Uh, the big advantage of this setup is, of course, that we can do all three at the same time. That is really convenient, because with this setup, we will need three of these to cover each one, each with their own network, or a large network that will output one pattern each to one setup each. Here, we don't need that. We can have everything in the same setup with three level emitters and everything, but it's slow, consumes more power, and I have not been able to uh, grow the the uh, the fluix crystals with this setup. They will just uh, they will just flow right through, so I can't auto craft that in this setup. So it's it has some good sides, it has some bad sides. If you do know how to improve this, then leave a comment and. Uh, I will now go through how to build it. If you don't need that, then thank you for watching. And if you want to watch me rebuild it, stay tuned. Okay, so I have teared everything down except for some cabling, so we know exactly how to place things. And let's start from this side. We have the power uh, creative power cell down here below. So we have only these seeds in the, inside the storage and nothing else. So let's begin with the controller, put it in place, and we have three crafting CPUs. And as I did before, using the monitors, it does they doesn't consume or they don't consume any channels, so they they can be used quite they, they're good to have in this setup. And we have the interface. So this interface will receive our encoded patterns. And all these three are one seed, two, one pure. I made them before. So they are the same as, as before. Okay. Then we need to receive those. So that will be done in this. So we'll have an ME interface. That's the receiving part. Now it's connected. But we don't have any power. These large blocks, they will transfer power through it but these won't. So let's play some fiber. Actually, I think it's more better looking doing like that. So now we have some uh, power into the network. Here you can't see it, but we have power. And then we have the, uh, the way back on this side. Let's see, we have a storage bus somewhere. Here it is. Now this will export anything and I will set the priority to minus one. So this has lower priority than the formation plane that we have up there. And every, anything I throw in the network will be output through the storage bus into the interface and back, back to the storage, the green network. Okay, all is good and well. Let's see. These three, let's put those in place. 
will use the level emitters. I will have one for each uh, for each recipe. So one for each crafting uh, crafting job. And to make that happen, we need to upgrade them with crafting card. Emit redstone while item is crafting. Like that. And pure fuel fluix. So as soon as we start to craft, this will emit a redstone signal. So now it's not, of course. And the final crafting card and the certus emit while crafting. Now what what are we do, do <laughs> what do we need this for? Well, we have the toggle bus. Okay. And we'll use three of those. So they will let's see here here and here and we can do like that i actually prefer to place the quartz fiber because it looks better and it's very clear what what we're doing but the function is the same just to be clear that we these two networks are not have nothing to do with with each other they only want power and these toggle buses, when redstone signal is emit, then these will uh, switch to on and let energy flow into the orange network. But only when crafting. Only when crafting. Now we can place the accelerators. We have them on each side of the flowing water. Again, I, oh, I think you only need these four and not these three plus one at the top. Um, but I'm not real, I'm not 100% sure. Let's wait with that. And to put the items in, they are exported to the red network through the interface. Place an ME formation plane over here. And now we need to format it. Remember, we have the fussy card that make that we can match any we can split it different but i think we need to have match any any seed like that so any any seed and we raise the priority to one shouldn't need to actually because that will that one was minus one but anyway let's do it like this and this will output the seeds and the annihilation plane will import anything. You see, anything goes, whatever I place here will be put, sucked in by the annihilation plane. It's not a seed, so it goes into the storage bus and we can find it here. All these things that I dumped here. And now we're done. It's that simple. So we can place the water and let's leave it open and now we try to craft so again I can craft one or ten doesn't doesn't matter and you can see it here this one is active and you can see the particles on on this side as well they are flowing through the water over and over and over and if I pick them up Let's see, here are all the 10 seeds. They are at 1%, so still haven't grown anything. Oh, because these are offline. Why are they offline? Because the... Oops. Because this one was in the wrong, uh, wrong block space. Let's try it one more time. And we'll place the toggle buses on this side because it's in the upper block space. Now we can see this is green and it's active. Mm. Now they are online, now they are sparkling. So now let's see if we can place the seeds back again. Now they are flowing and the accelerators are running. 
And the good thing with this setup is, again, we can do 10 of these. And we can have, which one was that? Pure Certus, then we can do Nether as well. 10 of those. So we have three jobs at the same time in the same setup. <laughs> Looks quite fun, they are flowing and just, uh, they are circling around like that until they are finished. So if we pick them up now, they should have grown a little. You see 15%, 16, 14, 9% and they are, uh, yeah. So let's throw in a few and let's pretend that they are finished. How does it look? We need five and two and two. And now they're done. And that means that the level emitters are not outputting any signal and the accelerators are offline. So that's the setup. And once again, if you have any ideas of how to improve it, feel free to leave a comment and uh, then I'll make a new video. It's as uh, simple as that. All right, thanks for watching. See you in the next one. Bye bye.